Welcome to another Conservation Fridays. Today, we have Mary Parr, Stewardship Manager with the Pierce Cedar Creek Institute. Take it away, Mary. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. I'm excited to talk to you today about Pierce Cedar Creek Institute and some of the stewardship that we do on the property. So to begin, for those of you that don't know, um, the Institute is located just south of Hastings um, near the Dowling area. Um, so come on down and visit us. So the Institute's mission is to inspire appreciation and stewardship of the environment. And we do this through a lot of different ways. Um, so we are a nature center. So we host a lot of community educational programs, a lot of social hikes, um, this past year, we had about 300 different programs within the year, um, lots of different workshops and um, series. So take a look at our calendar. We're also an environmental education center. So we create a science curriculum for the local school districts and also host a lot of school field trips on the property. So this is an image of Matt Dykstra um, teaching a class about what looks like some tamarack forests. And then we're also a biological field station. Um, so some universities like Michigan State University, they have property that's dedicated to research, but a lot of other universities in the West Michigan area don't necessarily have this property dedicated. And so we're kind of a, a canvas that um, universities can come and apply to do research on the property. And we also have our own um, undergraduate educational programs over the summer where we pay students um, and faculty members to come and perform research on the property. Uh, so this research influences our management strategies um, and then also um, keeps us up to date on the different species on the property, like Eastern box turtle and also Massasauga rattlesnake, among many others. So in some of these pictures, they're looking at mussels. Um, we have an Eastern box turtle um, that's being head started. So you can see a tracker located on its shell. And then also we have some fellowship programs where we kind of teach them the ropes of land management or water quality management. So this is just a list of a few of those universities that are uh, members of our consortium. Um, in case you're interested, there's more information on our website. So the stewardship, um, while we have all of these other programs, we also have 850 acres of our own property. Um, a lot of this area is a matrix of diverse, uh, different natural communities, along with um, lots of different land history on the property. And so we have a, a wide variety of different natural areas. And so I'll kind of talk about those and some of the stewardship efforts, our um, fellowship program, and then some of the ongoing projects. So we are known for our namesake, Pierce Cedar Creek Institute. So Cedar Creek borders our property boundary um, on one side and flows along the property. We also have two lakes on the property, Brewster Lake and our own lake. Um, Brewster Lake is a kettle lake, and then our own lake is a man-made lake. We have a lot of unique forestry on the property, um, some of which are along these um, remnant glacial eskers. Uh, so we have some beech maple forests, some dry um, hickory oak forests that traditionally would, would burn. We also have a lot of vernal pools located through these mesic um, forestry communities. So every spring we'll survey the salamanders in those pools. Um, and then we have a number of wetland forests. So we have um, cedar swamps. Um, we also have some Southern hardwood forests. Also, um, we have a considerable amount of prairie fen on the property. So um, we have over a hundred acres of prairie fen. This is a very rare, unique community. Um, in on our property, this prairie fen borders Cedar Creek on both sides and is also one of the primary um, habitats for the Massasauga rattlesnake. Um, so we perform surveys in the spring 
um, in collaboration with uh, Jen Moore from Grand Valley State University. Oopsies, sorry about that. We also have a lot of recreated prairie on the property. So a large amount of the property was used for agriculture when we obtained the property. And so it was converted into recreated prairies as demonstrations and also um, educational um, areas that we could use to perform research. Uh, in these areas, we do conduct prescribed fire. Um, so that's one of our, our main tools we use on the property. So we will conduct prescribed fires in the prairies along with the dry oak forests. And these are used to manage invasive species, undesirable species, um, and um, replace some of the, the natural disturbances that occurred in these communities. So here's one of our burn crews um, from last spring. And we also try to integrate a lot of new, um, new students to fire. And so we also host typically one prescribed burn over the summer that has a lot of the biological field station students. We also have a considerable amount of trails on our property. So we have about eight to 10 miles of trails. Uh, so this requires a lot of maintenance. Um, we rely on a lot of volunteer labor. Um, two are pictured here. And we also utilize the, the fellows that are over the summer. So a lot of the, the trails on the property were actually old logging roads or um, recreational roads from previous landowners. And so some of them are on some pretty steep areas. And so we've been installing some of these water bars to kind of mitigate um, erosion that occurs in those areas. So the trail maintenance is ongoing. And then also we have um, some invasive species and diseases that we have to monitor for. So um, this red oak tree that you can see was kind of suspect for oak wilt uh, last summer. And this image was taken in July, usually in the peak of monitoring. We had to take a bowl cut sample and, and send it to MSU. This particular tree did not have oak wilt, but probably um, a number of other oak diseases or just general oak decline at the end of its life. Um, so that's one of the things we'll monitor for um, throughout the summer. And then also looking at some of the other herbaceous invasive species, um, we have purple loose strife over here. And so we will, um, in some years when the purple loose strife is very high, we'll release some biocontrols um, or just monitor for them. So the spotted knapweed you can see here has weevils on it. So that was one um, biological field station research project was just to go out and look and see if we had the biocontrol. Um, we never released it on the property, but it looks like it found its way here. Um, so we'll kind of monitor those populations and observe how the biocontrols are working. We also have a very large um, native plant sale. So we have two greenhouses on the property and we grow all the plants um, from seeds collected on our property or sourced within the Great Lakes region. So we sell a lot of these plants um, through retail at the Institute. And then we also will use them for some conservation projects on the property um, and throughout the community. So this is an image of us installing some of the shade garden mixes and um, Monarch waste station mixes along our terrace. We also have a number of volunteer days. So if you're interested in volunteering with our stewardship work, um, please come and join us. This was a, an event last year in collaboration with the um, Michigan United Conservation Clubs. And so they came out and helped us do some woody invasive removal. And so we'll be having another day, I believe June 24th, uh, where we'll be planting native plugs in the same field. Other volunteer stuff we do, usually in the fall, we collect a lot of the seeds that we use for the plant sale, but also for the um, other projects occurring on the property. And so we'll collect the species, we'll process them, usually in the fall inside, and then we'll bag them and label them, and eventually we will um, apply them outside. 
And then also a new effort we have is more towards our sustainability as FSV Institute. So we do have compost right now, but we're looking to upgrade our current system to this one. Um, you can see here is from the Gun Lake tribe. This is their composting system. So we hope to increase our capacity and increase biodegradable food, foodware we can use, and also hand towels from restrooms. So hopefully this um, will kind of mitigate how much waste we contribute to our local landfill. And a couple projects to highlight some, some activities that we're up to. Uh, we have a wild rice restoration project, also called Minomen. Um, so wild rice is an aquatic plant that grows throughout this um, southern Michigan region and also portions of northern Michigan. Um, it grows in rivers and lakes. Um, there's two different species that um, specialize in those areas. Historically, it was very present along the Kalamazoo River and a lot of the lakes in our area and serves as excellent habitat for fish and other waterfowl. Um, and it also has a lot of cultural significance um, in the Anishinaabe culture. So we started working with the Gun Lake tribe to try and restore um, these populations locally so that they can ideally harvest from them. And so um, these restoration efforts started off pretty well. So we found that um, wild rice grew very well in some of the sediments of this area. However, there were challenges um, with waterfowl utilizing it too much. So because it's such a beneficial plant for wildlife, um, they started to eat it and kind of decimate our restoration efforts. So lately we've been using um, exclosures to try to limit waterfowl predation or identify other wetlands that don't have as much waterfowl present. Another project we're working on locally is a oak savanna restoration with the Circle Pine Center. So Circle Pines had approached um, the Institute along with the Michigan DNR uh, private land biologist um, asking for support in identifying alternative um, restoration techniques that don't involve herbicide. Um, and so we found this to be an interesting question and an interesting experiment, as we also occasionally have some private landowners that um, choose not to use herbicides. So we have, um, we decided to do one site at the Institute that has a traditional herbicide restoration. Um, Circle Pines will be doing an, a, the same restoration, but without herbicides. Um, and then we have a, a control site in the Berry State Game area. And so we're hoping through this long-term project, we'll be able to identify um, some successful alternative herbicide techniques. Um, we can identify any challenges that occur along the way. We can also compare the timeline of each restoration and their success. And then we're also incorporating a few different monitoring um, items. So we're collecting the insects on the property um, over the summer. And then we're also observing the plant cover change over time. So here's a picture of a couple of the fellows from last year. They're collecting the bug specimens. So we collect them every single week. And then we have a DNR entomologist who spends his winter time identifying these bugs to genus and then comparing the different locations and their, their bug collections. So the fellows we have over the summer um, are mentored by myself and the new stewardship coordinator, Drew Vandegrift. And so they spend the whole summer learning about land management, um, kind of serving as a shadow and just being a sponge and absorbing all of the information. They help on a lot of the different restoration projects, um, trail maintenance, different plant surveys, plant propagation in the greenhouses, and also leading a lot of volunteer events for the students and for the public. So we teach these students how to use chainsaws and tractors and a lot of different skills that you probably wouldn't learn in the classroom. So here's last year's fellows. Um, learning how to use equipment, learning um, how to do some plant identification, and um, different record keeping for data, and then also um, assisting in prescribed fire. So that is one highlight we try to achieve at the end of the summer. 
And they also lead some student work work days. So you can see here they're having fun in the field, pulling some purple loosestrife, and then we propagated plants in those areas. So that is all I have for all of you. If you're interested in the Institute and the stewardship we do on the property, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, and I'd be very happy to see all of you at our stewardship work days throughout the summer. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. That was impressive. I am always surprised by how much you guys do there. Um, Zach, I have a question from Zach. He asks, what is the favorite, what is your favorite part of your job? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I think my favorite part is having the, the land management fellows, um, just to be able to see them develop skills over time and develop their knowledge um, of the property. It's very rewarding at the end of the summer just to see them grow and evolve and then fly off and see where they go in their careers. And actually, Zach was a, a land management fellow. So look at that. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> that's awesome. That I think is probably, I I think that's the coolest program that you guys have personally, just as a continuation and, and expanding the knowledge is just so cool. So I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, so thank you again. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I have, I have one and it's kind of random, but I, I was, I was thinking about this as Mary was, was talking. If you had say an unlimited budget and perhaps many minions that could help you, what would be some projects on your, your bucket list that you would like to accomplish at Pierce at some point into the future? Wow. Um, Ooh, that's a tough one, Sarah. I would love to increase a lot of the plant diversity on the property. So I would say managing some of the prairies we have and just planting a ton of plugs and um, really getting a lot of pollinator habitat. Yeah, I don't know, Sarah, that's a, it's too big. I would have to sit down for a couple hours and work on a plan 